Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Good evening everybody, Militiaman and Crew here once again. It is the 18th of this month, and I hope everybody's having a good uh, September because I'll tell you what, um, it's, it's been awesome, and we've got the fall, I guess we had the full moon last night, I was wiped, I went to bed, <laughs> but you know, all that good stuff, the lunar eclipse, everything, ah, I missed it, but so what? Anyway, I hope everybody's having a great day because today it's beautiful here where I am in the Northwest and uh, had the grandson Lincoln was here. Uh, the kitties were going, they were completely jealous. So Wally and Winnie and a funny story real quick was this afternoon, they were so intense and wanted to be around everybody. Um, they made a little move on our patio and uh, poor Winnie, she fell in a bucket of water, splashed Wally and it just crushed them. So they were, they were completely wet and took off running. So anyway, that just happened a few minutes ago. That's why I'm kind of laughing about it still. It's, it, it was really cute. It's really cool. Okay. So anyway, the government parliamentary meeting today discusses boosting non-oil revenues and developing the economy. Iraq's going to be needing you guys a non-oil revenues. And we all know that. And that's what this whole plan for the last 18 months, almost two years or more, has been to get Iraq to a private sector and to get them to um, boost their non-oil revenues. And so basically the Finance Committee um, held joint meetings a couple, uh, it was on the Tuesday the 17th um, with the Deputy Minister to discuss financial and economic policies and plans to maximize non-oil revenues. Uh, the Finance Committee requested specific cl clarifications regarding the Ministry of Planning's uh, plan to set financial and economic policies. Uh, they go in and to say that in addition to those, they wanted estimates of spending on and, not on, but and non-oil revenues. So when you've got planning, you gotta, you got to know what, where your money input and outputs are going to be. The Deputy Minister of uh, Planning provided a detailed explanation, so he got back to them. The Ministry's plan related to monetary policy project management and study in general budgets while pointing to the possibility of building an economic model that includes financial, economic, and trade policy through automating the ports and the taxes, unifying procedures in various sectors, and applying the principles of free trade while protecting the national product. So that paragraph right there tells you a, a big story because that sounds like what they're dealing with is to the likes of their professional audit firms, et, et cetera, because they have the advice. Remember those companies like K2, Ernst & Young? Um, can't remember the other ones, all of them, because one of them is uh, just escaped my mind. But anyway, uh, they have a lot of companies involved, and they and you guys all know that. And again, when it comes to specific things and, and certain aspects, it's not only international institutions that are involved. Um, there are international entities like the World Bank, the IMF, the Bank of International Settlements, etc. They all work in conjunction. So basically, though, if they're successful in, in doing a model like that Turkmenistan model that you guys know that I've talked about over the last seven, eight years, um, is been important. And so if Iraq is successful, they'll use this model again because there's other Middle Eastern countries that could probably use the same kind of model to make themselves a little bit better and enhance themselves and get more financial inclusion for their people and take advantage of uh, non-oil revenues because there's a lot of rentier, as they say, uh, economies in the Middle East. And so they're going to need it. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Saudi Arabia is watching uh, and part of the process because of the fact of um, their relationship with oil and their relationship with the private sector needing to be diversified. We're going to see how that goes. And I think it's going to go well. Um, is the decline in oil prices related to high exchange rates? This is uh, the governor of the central bank. This is his article. It says it's important, the clarification of the relationship. Uh, so the governor of the central bank today, Ali Alak, announced the wi that today, Wednesday, all remittances will be subject to audits. So all payments, all remittances, well, I should say just the remittances because that's what it says, well, pointing out that the decline in oil prices has, has nothing to do with the rise 
in the exchange rate. So, the central bank provides dollars at the official price for all commercial and personal channels, travelers, and for all types of operations that represent legitimate activities, operations, and requests. So, Alak basically told the, the, the news agencies um, that same story. He points out that any price outside the country is a price that is only indicated for the existence of abnormal operations. So you, you got to realize what he's getting into is the parallel market. So out they're saying any price outside the country is a price that is only indicated for the existence of abnormal operations that try to get out of the official and legal system and the correct fundamentalist channels. So in other words, whoever is trying to avoid playing by the rules, like I've always been saying, because that's what they've been telling us, um, is holding true. We're, uh, Militia Man and Crew um, in our patreon.com forward slash MM and Crew will show you the data and you can come and get this same data uh, in there. Got a search menu in there, you guys. That you, you plug in some key phrases and, and surf with it a little bit. You'll, you're going to find that you're going to pick up a lot of this stuff on your own. But hey, occasionally I can help. You guys, you know, looking for articles uh, on occasion, I'll help to do that to the best of my ability. But that's why I read some of these um, uh, articles, their, their text to um, their title. Okay. Um, he, go, he, he goes on, Alalak points out that ways have been put in place for each channel to ensure the provision of dollar on the one hand and very large amount of control to ver verify the integrity of previous operations before their implementation. So in other words, what happened to take place before they're gonna, what happened in the, in the transaction that took place um, and then prior to funding it, allowing it, they have an audit system is how I can see this. Um, he goes, he's pointing out this is a major shift in external transfers as they were previously be, being scrutinized at a later stage. So their processes changed because they weren't quite scrutinized um, at the time of the, uh, let's see, large amounts of control, integrity, previ previous operations. So at the beginning of the transactions, they may not have been scrutinized. It was after the fact. So what they're doing is they're, they're making sure it's all done at once all the audit is done at once. In other words, the whole the whole transaction, whether it's coming in or getting ready to go out, it's all been transacted. So if you come in to this to the to the trade, they want to know where your money's coming from effectively. Okay? Vice versa. They want to know who the money's gonna go to. I think that's the best way to do it. Sorry about that, you guys. Uh, that little stutter there, but Anyway, um, it says this is a major shift in external transfers as they were previously being scrutinized at a later stage. And today all transfers are not carried out and are not carried out until after they undergo the audit process. So those big companies like, you know, Ernst & Young, K2, et cetera, et cetera, um, those folks are probably paying attention to it and this new platform that they have in place, the United States Treasury, uh, is probably paying attention closely uh, with the CBI. So Al Alak is making sure everyone basically knows uh, he has things under control. In my view, no dollar movement unless the audit process is complete first. It's pretty easy. The move is a major shift, the external transfers. That's what they say. There's also reassurance the CBI has the tools necessary to defend the dinar exchange rate as they have ample reserves to do so. And basically that quote is he points out that decline in the price of oil has nothing to do with the rise in the exchange rate because Iraq has reserves for foreign currencies, which enables it to defend the exchange rate. That's what central banks do, my friends, is that they defend the exchange rate. And that does not matter uh, whether it's at 1310, which they've done, or if it's gonna be at whatever the real effective exchange rate's going to be in the future. They have, they've worked this out. This isn't something brand new. They know what they're doing. The Drop the Three Zeros project is still heavily focused in my mind that it is going to be uh, applied. I think that's exactly how it should be. It should be applied. 
purchasing power is deserved by this country. They have uh, assets that are just phenomenal. As you guys know, the non-oil reserves uh, are going to be non-oil uh, revenues uh, against their gold reserves, against their foreign reserves, uh, um, and other uh, sources of income through taxes and tariffs, etc. It's just going to be phenomenal. Okay, N moving on. Uh, here's uh, Shaquan Abdullah meets Al Amiri and calls for the approval of this draft law. Okay, so what are we talking about? This, um, today, this is the 18th. That's that, that, that article is out today. But I want to go back a little bit into a time frame of uh, about two days ago. Is that the... There's an article here that says Al Mandalawi uh, chairs an expanded meeting with the head of the government committee regarding the implementation of Article 140. This is two days ago. And I brought this up in a, in, a, in a video and I think I was misquoted, but that's not a really big issue because it's basically, I'm, I'm going to re reiterate it again. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, you have to understand what, what they say is not always that easy, but to understand. But acting Speaker of the House of Representatives, Moshin al Mandalawi, chaired an expanded, expanded meeting, which was on Monday, with the head of the Government Committee for Article 140 of the Constitution. Hadi al Amiri, in the presence of the Deputy Speaker of the Council, Shaka Wan Abdullah, the heads of the parliamentary blocks and committees, and members of the parliamentary committee for Article 140. It says here that in a statement, it says the meeting discussed the results of the work of the government committees. It's okay, so I'm going to read it again. The meeting discussed the results of the work of the government committee and completed stages, completed stages of implementing Article 140 in cooperation with the ministries and relevant authorities. It doesn't say it's completed the whole thing. It says to the completed stages of implementing Article 140. So it says the, key, the council is keen to legislate the laws that would lift the injustice from citizens and harm of their decisions of the dissolved revolutionary command from way back in the past and that defunct regime, adding that, quote, doing justice to the oppressed by restoring their usurped right contributes to strengthening security, political, and social stability. So here in that statement, that's what they did a few days ago. And so now you come back to today's article and you say, well, the deputy speaker of council representatives, Abdullah, says Wednesday, what I wrote to you guys or read to you guys with the head of the government committee of Article 140 in the Constitution. I don't need to go over it again. OK, I, my view was today was that Article 140 has been in the news of late to speak. They speak of continued cooperation, joint coordination between the parliamentary and government committees of Article 140. They have also stated where they are at in the process. The be, the, that being, right, the completed stages of implementing Article 140 in cooperation with the ministries and relevant authorities. So for them to be at this stage would mean to me that they are completed with most everything necessary for implementation of that Article 140. It may be uh, why Al Sudani has yet to send the oil and gas bill out yet. Is the Prime Minister sure all is in order or of the of uh, the actual content of the bill and its finality and its accuracy? Because we know that these guys have been guilty of changing things at the last minute. So Al Sudani is probably uh, having a review done. I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. So, but anyway, here's a snippet that says, and this is from a previous article. Um, and this was, I believe, the same time frame, but no, it was actually today, I believe. The Prime Minister pledged before the House of Representatives to send important laws to implement his government program. He says that the most prominent laws that are supposed to be sent to the House of Representatives are the oil and gas bill. Yes, so on my view, is this was today. So he's actually confirming that this is supposed to be in their hands, and he may be holding it for some reason or another. Maybe it's in review to make sure it's accurate. These guys are going to want their um, their ducks in order. You know, you hear the ducks outside sometimes, but I'm telling you, these guys want everything done right properly. And I'm assuming that the Central Bank of Iraq, 
Tate Sammy, Parliamentary Finance Committee. Everybody should be on the same page. We got to get this right because it's going to be big, it's going to be powerful, and it's going to be showcased around the world. And if they're going to make a model out of it for other countries to use, uh, they want to get it right. And again, remember the scholars, the, the teachers, they were talking about some things that were supposed to happen on the 25th. Remember I talked about the fact that they were upset because of the electronic systems that hadn't been implemented yet, the electronic money, they talked about it. The teachers, right? I think t this afternoon, this evening, there's breaking news where there's some data that's out there on the internet. All I can say is I don't have it in ink specifically, but I, do, I'm, I am aware of that Al Sauter may have spoken tonight. If you guys want to check Twitter, you guys do that. If you want to check other social media sites, because he's pretty active there. But I'm pretty sure what he's done is he told them to stand down. In other words, cool your jets. What? Why? We're going to find out. Uh, I like it. Al Sadr doesn't talk much. Okay, when there's angry, remember the article about angry, anger dem demonstrations? And it was the teachers and scholars that were talking about this, that were going to do that. And I believe it was on the 25th. Uh, it t sounds like tonight Al Sauter has told them to stand down. Okay, with Apple's participation in the media and communication sector sets a roadmap to build a long-term strategic relationship. Basically, you guys, look, a lot of technologies companies are in Iraq and around Iraq and have been. We've... We talked about XRP being um, a, in back in 2023, and we knew that. We knew about the Buna platform clearing with digital blockchain issues back in 2023. We knew that blockchain was probably coming on board over a decade ago. Have they tested it? Yeah. Have they been using things that, in that nature with artificial intelligence, etc.? Sure they have. Are they in advanced stages? Well, if you remember what I said, something to that effect in one of these articles was they were at a stage of completed stages to be ready for the Article 140. Okay, so you can see that it's, this is all coming together at the same time. So anyway, this particular situation is Apple Communications Company, massive as everybody knows. It says the head of the commission, well, the, it says the, communi the Communications and Media Commission um, is announced today on Wednesday the preparation of training and development programs that allows for the creation of job opportunities for young people in coordination with a global company, Apple, while indicating the provision of technical and legal support and the necessary studies to improve the business environment and build the digital economy in Iraq and confirmed the development of a roadmap to build long-term strategic relationship with Apple. Well, they, again, they've, been in, they've already started this process. It's not brand new. They, they've been working on it for over a year and a half. This paragraph caught my eye. I'll just read that. I won't get into the whole thing, but it says, the commission began dialogue and opening horizons for strategic cooperation about a year and a half ago, during which an, a number of meetings and discussions were held to exchange enrichment and point of views and develop a roadmap for building long-term strategic relationships with Apple. As one of the major and solid global companies, which resulted in a visit by a high-level delegation from government affairs responsible for Iraq's file as a first step on the path to, boom, implementation. What do they have ready to turn on? Okay. Prime Minister Mohammed Shia al-Sadani confirmed earlier during his meeting with a delegation from the American company Apple in the presence of the Chairman of Communications and Media Commission, Ali al-Muyad, that Iraq is witnessing transformations in the digital reality today, as well as registering uh, phones entering Iraq in a way that makes them a competitive prices. But really what it comes down to is what? It's coming down to not only phone products, but because phones, they support digital transformations related to the economy and check it out and money. <laughs> Apple's talking about supporting the digital transformations of the country of Iraq and what is it related to? The economy and money. You think? <laughs> Go figure, right? Uh, 40 million iPhones possibly? Really? Oh my God. Thousand bucks a piece? Whatever they cost? All right. 
there has been a year and a half to go that has gone by with a dialogue so we all know the communications and media commission have been in touch the digital transformation is a reality and the support of iraq is going to get large it's going to get very large you guys and this transformation is related to the yeah, again i have to say it because that cracks me up economy and money and i have to say it indeed it is i think you guys can see it i think there's some bright people in my room in patreon in our discord chat room and I think in our new XRP chat room is going off well. Um, lots of good stuff in there. And um, really has taken off, everybody, because the fact is people believe in real technology. People believe in um, what they own. And one of the things I do believe in is I believe in our investment in Iraqi Dinar. I believe in our investment, well, in my investment, um, in XRP. Uh, I'm a complete novice in it, but I do get trends i do see hard work i do see what technologies can do and i can i can read and see that wow this is this is really powerful information because there's a 23 page report out today that i come across it's done in 2024 and it's done with the imf the bank of international settlements and the world bank and their input right and it's about central bank well it's about digital money okay in brief, I put a, a PDF file in my room today. I'm, 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 I believe it may be posted sometime today or tonight, but in our Discord room. But it's it is it's a 23 page document. You should probably read it, you got, or you can Google it. You can look for it. You'll find stuff that they do. Um, it's on their website. But on on the on, when you Google it, you're gonna probably just gonna be fine. It's a PDF document. So sharing a PDF document doesn't work very well, you guys. So, but the cool part is is that. The talk is specifically about um, things that the world is going through. They're going through this digital transformation and they're going to use things, digital money, if you will, um, whether we like it or not, but they believe that there is um, a definition of money and they're going to abide by that definition of money. But they're going to probably have some workarounds in some shapes or forms because of the nature of um, the world. Everybody's coming to a new digital transformation. And so you guys look it up. It's going to be powerful. Um, you need to know what you own. And so I would dig into it. Uh, I'll leave it at that, right? In order to provide purposeful digital content, the Ministry of Communication supports the strategic partnership between Supercell, the global one. Uh, 1001 platform and the TOD application. So I don't know if it's Toad or Todd, <laughs> but anyway, I think that's kind of funny. Um, Statement Ministry states that this uh, Wednesday, Dr. Al Yassiri's future vision to provide legal content on the internet and respect intellectual property rights by granting technical facilities to partners and developing fiber optic infrastructure to place Iraq among the ranks of developed countries. Within the framework of the ministry's efforts and continuous support to enhance the role of communications sector in partnership with the private sector, private sector, to keep pace with modern techno technological developments to provide the best services on the government internet network for all subscribers to the optical cable network with FTTH technology, um, just probably assume that's fifth generation technology, but I'm not 100%. Anyway, they go on to say that, you know, they're broadcast, there'll be, you know, addition to broadcasting for international and regional sports events, um, which will enhance their position as a preferred entertainment option for viewers inside Iraq. So in other words, football, all the different little sports, sporting events and stuff, they're pretty big on that. And um, they're going to have the ability to be able to broadcast that stuff. So Iraq's moving in a direction with advanced mechanisms for communications. Having this FTTH systems or fifth, fifth generation systems in Iraq is going to be modern. It's going to be fast, online with developed countries, in line, I'm sorry, in line with developed countries. So look, being in a part, partnership with the private sector, company like Apple and others is going to be a whole new experience for the country and probably one that has significant growth and what an impact it will have on the Iraqi citizens. And I think that's going to be a really good thing. 
So lastly, this article is called New Mechanism for Collecting Tax Amounts Electronically. It may not be the, the gunshot across the bow for you guys, but, but think about it for a minute. If they're collecting taxes, tax amounts electronically, and they're doing it with a blockchain system, they're gonna be able to know how much money they have, how much money they've generated, and how quickly they can get that access to that money, which is instantaneous. If they're using new technologies, and if they ever use um, the technology with XRP, one of the fastest systems in the world, as far as I can tell, um, they'll be able to know what kind of money, they'll have statistics, they'll have big companies like those auditing firms being able to gather that data and know exactly where their money is coming and going um, at a, almost at a moment's notice uh, on a daily basis as opposed to maybe weeks after or later, you know, who knows. Anyway, chart, so basically he's explaining that um, in the municipality, they're giving the citizens a choice of paying via MasterCard or Visa or whatever, charging him 5% of the value of the amount if he pays it in cash. So there was, there's a tax of 5% if you pay in cash. And if not, you don't have that if you do it electronically. So the department's headquarters are encouraging to electronic payments. Well, if you think about it, if you're going to pay your phone bill, pay your car payment, you're going to pay all, you know, yada, 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 buy gas, everything's got a surcharge of 5% by using cash. <laughs> I've got a strong feeling people are going to take the card. That's what they're moving towards anyway. Doesn't mean they're going to get rid of it all, but they're going to get rid of a lot more. But they've been doing a good job of it anyway. Um, here it says that um, this guy, Obadi, attributed the adoption of this mechanism to several reasons, most notably contributing to enhancing banking culture and how to deal electronically with payment cards in addition to getting rid of torn currencies. Think about that for a minute. Remember all those currencies? They had that big video that was like 18, 20 minutes or more that were showing that they were taking actually perfectly good money and destroying it. Well, they do the same thing with torn currencies. And in this particular case, um, the citizens, for instance, won't be deducted, you know, an extra 5% out of their cash. They just, they'll, they'll have a, you know, just use what they can on, you know, less 5%. But, and also, they're not using cash, therefore the money is not being worn out. And it saves the central bank uh, and government money. So that's a big deal. Basically, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the world is being used, the digital world is being used efficiently, and it saves the citizens extra costs, makes sense, by using those, ex, um, those payments. 5% of every, every paid fee is a lot of money over years, you guys. I think the citizens will get it. And importantly, it's an efficient way of assuring the state how much income they, they are getting and accurately in a very timely manner. I say that, that that's very timely, that fast. Here's a, here's a uh, um, member of Patreon. I'm not sure if he's in Discord or she is or whoever it is. Uh, Just Ducky, thank you for your uh, post today. Um, um, I like some of the good. I, I don't like some of the bad, <laughs> but, but ultimately uh, we have a give and take in um, Militia Man and Crew. But he stated that here's another critical piece of the huge puzzle in Iraq that is being completed, uh, one piece after another. It's all coming together at breakneck speed. The collection of taxes electronically, one, will reduce tax collectors, government employees, will eliminate errors and possibly corruption, good points. Collections, getting bribes, get rid of that. Faster and more accurate collection of huge sums of non-oil income, bingo. Accurate accounting of taxes collected on the time critical reporting to let the government know how much money is due and received, which equals more accurate budgets and forecasting of income available to spend. As the man said, teaching the public how to use their credit card. <laughs> I love it. Electronically. Well done. Thank you, Just Ducky. That's pretty cool. But the bottom line, at the end of the day, is that Iraq is uh, effectively showing us that they're going international, and uh, we're gonna watch it happen, you guys. Enjoy, thank you, like, subscribe, hit that like button, don't forget, 
We're going to try to keep this place running as long as we can and into the future. This XRP thing that we have may very, be, may very well be another additive that we stay focused on because of the fact is, is that technology is going to be very important into this new place that we're headed. So please join Patreon with Militia Man and crew. Come on into our Discord chat room and you can easily do that accessible by www.patreon.com mm and crew i'm sorry forward slash mm and crew so we'll see you there enjoy hope you guys enjoyed the night once again guys don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content subscribe to the channel or join us at the militia man and crew patreon community for even more exclusive content you can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running your generous support is greatly appreciated as always much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.